What's up gamers? We're going to be talking about a lot of the things that sages can do in this game and there are probably a bunch in this video you may have not known because I didn't know until I recorded this video. So let's go see what all the sages can do. Okay, one of the biggest pro tips before we get into this entire video and have all of the sages out is whistling. If your sages are all involved in combat, whistle and they will all run back to you and stop engaging with the enemy. Always use this in a chaotic situation and then you know you can bring them all back and go to work and, and start to destroy the enemies with all your sages so whistling okay don't forget guys very important because i saw a lot of people complain about the sages not obeying them and listening this is Tulin, and something you may have not have known is that when you put on a divine helmet, guess who also puts on the divine helmet, you, right? How cool is that? So I'm going to be using this divine helmet for the entire section of Tulin. Besides being able just to push you in the air and make you go further, Tulin can actually do a lot of other things in the game. Now, something fun that I like doing with Tulin is going to be able to place a bunch of bombs down in front of an enemy. You can do this with a lot of enemies, and I go for the max amount of bombs until it completely despawns. So let me just put these all together and put this one right over here so they're all in a nice pile and then what we're gonna do is go ahead and grab Tulin, activate that gust make sure you're placing yourself right in front of that bomb pile and then fire away baby and see what happens <laughs> And the Hinox just goes down. Goodbye. So great use of bombs with Tulin. Another great use of Tulin is being able to clear sand piles. Uh, I did this one in the desert temple. So there we go. In the electric temple. Yeah, that, that's it. And you can find stuff under the sands. Very cool. Another great use that Tulin has is going to be able to use it on a sail. Now, I know everyone has motor boats and things with fans. But you know, when you're in the early stages, this is fantastic. This will do the job if you don't have a fan. Okay, maybe it's not as efficient, but it, it blows your sail. Tulin can also go ahead and blow sleds across the sand so it's pretty nice and surprisingly it gets pretty good movement if there is some sort of incline and yeah just don't fall in a pit this also works really well on a sled in the snow without using any vehicles so just jumping on a regular sled does the job one of my favorite things about Tulin is it just being out and able to land crit headshots just like that while you're in the middle of a fight and i'm just jumping around here uh, just showing that hey this thing does the job pretty well there you go took out the enemy for me uh this is why Tulin is probably the most op one Okay, now here is something really fun that you can do with Tulin, comboing it with something special. So if there's a group of enemies, like for example, this whole Coblin and all his friends, you're going to want to grab something very icy. And this is this is what I'm doing over here. I'm throwing some Keys Ice Eyeballs. Oh, I only got the boss here. And I'm going to throw this at the squad. Okay, the whole entire squad is frozen. And what I want to do is place myself with Tulin, and you can kind of see what's about to happen here. I'm going to go ahead and just blow all of them in the water. <laughs> And Bokoblins don't really last in the water, so you can see some of them die. Okay, he went for overkill there, just shooting one and murdering it. And then you can see the boss, Bokoblin, just die. So, uh, ice combos and Tulin, very OP, especially if you're by water. Another instance is just using the gust on its own to just blow away Bokoblins and stop them from attacking you. And you can see it does affect it a couple of times. And up oh, there's that nice crit again. A very good combo you can do is using Yonobu to cause a fire line on the ground and then using Tulin to push you across that area. So, comboing these two stages is a great thing to do. It can help you get across lands very easily. This is what Yonobo looks like without the mask, and when you put on the divine helmet, this is what Yonobo looks like. It's so cool. Now, some of the basic things that Yonobo can do is simply just run up to enemies and whack them on the floor, because he's holding a double-handed weapon, but he's so powerful he can hold it with a single hand, and it just knocks enemies off completely. And besides Yonobo's basic attacks with his weapon and his rolling attack, there's a lot more that he can do. One of my favorite things to do is combo this one with iced out enemies. It's like an whole entire bowling pin and just knocks them back completely. So really powerful attack by Yunobu. Doesn't get all the enemies though because some of them are in the back and he hits them directly hard, but that's what he does. Yunobu is very good at breaking rock walls because he makes an absolute mess when he breaks any of these objects. So use them for that whenever you're in a cave. Don't really use them for getting ores and stuff because the ores and all these stuff you need to collect fly around everywhere. But don't worry, I'm going to show you sages that are very good for breaking rock and collecting items. When it comes to blue Hinox, the ones with little armor on their feet, Yonobo is going to be so good for this because check this out. When you aim at it, <laughs> look at it. It catches on fire completely. So uh, something really cool to start off your fight and then you can just easily nuke the Hinox as you choose after you start off that opening attack. If you ever encounter a rock enemy, Yonobo is going to be easily able to take them out by simply, that's it, they're dead. Just whacking into it using his ability. Very simple. Yonobo is also very good at causing forest fires, but in this case, it's 
going to be just to take out these evermean trees. They are going to stay on fire and their HP is going to tick and burn very slowly. They don't seem to die right away, but over time they will melt. Um, so you can give it a few whacks. That's a fun way to take down evermean trees just besides, you know, the typical chop chop. Now, one of my favorite things to do is bait out Moldugas with Yunobu and shoot some time bombs on the floor to kind of bait them out first before you go ahead and do this. And that time bomb, okay, all right, that was not supposed to happen. Oh boy. Well, that kind of saved me. Uh, Moduga jumped in the air and then I'm just going to go ahead and shoot it with a bomb arrow. Now, once the Moduga drops down, you want to hop on a ride that you created. In this case, I have my little sled here for the desert. And the cool thing is, Yunobu is going to go ahead and be able to attack, right? But you can spam. <laughs> you can keep spamming the enemy with Yunobu nonstop on a monster. Look how crazy this is. And you can literally do this on any single monster you come across, including while you're flying in the sky with Gliok. So go ahead and try it out on whatever you want. It's a very fun thing to do. This is what Riju looks like without the mask. And when you put on on the helmet and this is what Riju looks like with the mask on pretty cool actually while making this video i just discovered that sages do not like to be zoomed in on they literally will run away when you that is insane if you want to take a picture with them check, check this out ready <laughs> what okay that's a discovery now Riju has a really cool ability that when you select and hit a on her she makes a whole entire area of effect and the cool thing about it is you can either do a single shot or a multi shot on the enemy if you shoot the ground just like that all the enemies will scatter it's almost like in a complete explosion versus when you want to hit one enemy you just have to be able to have the electric follow up and be on top of that and when the radius is there on it shoot the enemy and it'll do a nasty amount of damage so you have to make those split decisions in battle whether you want to use the single or the multi shot which can help break a whole entire group of enemies now you can also combo Riju with Tolin by shooting the ground using the flame to get up and then having that nice push pretty much almost the same thing like Yunobu and Tolin Riju is also really good at breaking and shooting rock enemies so you can use that as well another big bonus is using Riju when you're in the depths if you can't see for some reason this almost acts like a sonar that you can see things so it'll highlight the rock around you to highlight the floor around you you see how it just highlighted that tree it's very cool and the thing is you can keep clicking on Riju over and over again because you're not using the ability so if it times out or if she gets far away from you you just have to click on it again in order to use it i use this a lot in the depths when i wasn't smart enough to use different ways of lighting it up and this was very good in the early game now something maybe you didn't know is that Riju is very good at baiting out moldugas in the desert so simply what you have to do is use her ability to light up a radius in an area then shoot an arrow on the floor which will attract the molduga to that spot you see that question mark it got a little bit curious there and then that molduga is going to jump in the air just like that and you can use a bomb to knock it down on the ground so very good for baiting and you could probably combo this with the noble earlier to hop on a ride after you get it baited up in the air if you're enjoying these kinds of videos make sure to hit that like button and subscribe real quick okay let's keep going this is sidon without the mask and when you put on the va ruda divine helm this is what sidon looks like i'm not too big of a fan of the elephant helmet compared to the other ones but you know what it'll do its job let me show you the things that sidon can do now sidon creates a bubble around you and that bubble can do cool things when you press y to attack it'll just throw a water attack using the bubble but if you go ahead and aim with your weapon like you're gonna throw it then you can direct exactly where the water is supposed to go there's a bokoblin in a watchtower and boom <laughs> bokoblin hit throw another one and dead so yeah it matters where you aim for this and i actually didn't realize this till a lot later now something else i noticed with sidon depending on what weapon you're holding is the amount of water that would come out so with the spear you notice it was very direct and straightforward if you use a two-handed weapon you'll notice that it is a lot bigger uh, area when you're attacking an enemy because it's slower but more powerful just like that and if you use a single-handed weapon, this is what the weapon attack will look like. So bigger than the spear, but smaller than the two-handed. Another huge benefit of this water shield is, well, let me show you. I'm going to go up to a silver bokoblin that's going to hit me. And look at that. I completely survived the attack. So it helps you take one hit completely undamaged while you have that water shield on. So it's a very important thing to try and use. Now, before this part, I just wanted to go ahead and grab this pristine Zora spear from the depths. Now, pristine weapons are going to be a lot more stronger with their attack, as well as the durability being a lot higher so they don't break as quick so i'm just gonna go ahead and uh, throw a weapon away here so i can go ahead and grab this there we go and i have a full video on my channel showing you all the op pristine weapons so you should totally check that one out now the really cool thing about pristine weapons especially the zora pristine weapons is that look at that right now it's 51 damage right with attack up plus eight but if we go ahead and activate sidon's ability okay i'm wet look at that it just doubled to 102 and now you could just go ahead and start wrecking enemies <laughs> a lot easier and the spears do a lot of dps Even 
even though they are 25% less damage than they say they are, the DPS will compensate for it. So it's really sick what they can do and how much damage output you can have. Now, if you're ever trying to go mining and collect items, using Sidon is probably going to be a very good option because when you break something with Sidon's water ability, it's not going to explode all over the place like Riju and Yonobu. Uh, it's going to be very, very in your face and the items will drop right in front of you. So use this if you're trying to mine Zonite. Use this if you're trying to get the rare ores like rubies, sapphires, diamonds, all that fun stuff. And uh, as you can see here, it doesn't protect you from gloom. So if you're curious, there you go. Now you know that it doesn't protect you from gloom and you can just go ahead and nicely pick up your items. Okay, moving on. When it comes to fighting enemies of an opposite element like fire and water is going to obviously destroy fire, Sidon's going to be very useful for that because when you use a water attack on a fire enemy, it's going to completely stun them. So let me just go ahead and get that water bubble. Stop running away. There we go. And then I'm going to throw my weapon at it so I can make a nice hit. And you can see, look at that. Instant fall of the Igneo Talus. And I told you about the damage earlier that it gets doubled up. So because we're wet, I'm going to go ahead and take out this. And yeah, look how fast this goes down. So you can see two things in application here, the stunning and the double weapon uh, damage with the wet. Oh, so nice. Now, something really cool. If you're in a fireplace and you have a bomb, usually it'll just blow up, especially in areas that are inside of volcanoes and places that are flammable. But if you do have this water bubble around you, which I actually just found out while I was making this video, uh, you hold the bomb, look at this, and you can throw it and it doesn't affect you. So the bubble is also going to protect you from explosive damage, which is huge. So you can explore caves and just pick out your bombs. And that's just another way of getting through all these crazy rocks in caves. And uh, I was able to find uh, the entrance of a secret shrine instead of this fire cave, the Issy Sim Shrine. Okay, let's move on. Now, something I wanted to test was when you make this water bubble and you shoot an electric item or an electric monster part at it, what's the damage? Like, like I just shot a regular arrow. Okay, we can see what that does. Now I'm going to go ahead, aim, but I'm going to use something electric like this yellow chew jelly and shoot. Look at that area of effect. That's a lot more damage. So I think using electric is going to affect a lot more. Like, wow, that was, that was a large area. And I also... Also, I'm going to try this without the effect. So here we go. Let me try using the chew jelly without the water bubble. And you can see it's not as much as it is with the... Yeah, it's not as crazy without the water bubble. So keep that in mind. A good cheat to use when you have Sidon's water bubble. Now, a really cool wombo combo that you can do with Sidon and Riju is going to be taking out Gloom Hands. Now, Sidon's water attack is going to be able to knock a good amount on it. And boom. So you can see it, it did a little good portion. Almost like, I would say like 40% damage on each one about actually like 30 to 40 percent damage now when you combo that with riju you side on to do the initial attack then all you need to do with riju is get two aoe effect hits with this on gloom hand so i'm just gonna hit the wall to get the aoe boom and it does some damage then i'm just gonna get another one here and shoot and the gloom hands just go down like that and then phantom gan is gonna show up but that's not what this video is about just about comboing these two to take out gloom hands now if it wasn't obvious before you can get burned but when you tap on side on especially in these volcanic areas, you can start to get a water cooling effect, which is going to protect you. So you can go ahead and, and take out enemies and you don't even need flame resistant armor as long as you have Sidon with you. Let me just take out these over here and I'm starting to burn. There we go. There we go. It's taking some time and just tap it. There you go. So you tap A, you keep getting this back because you're not using it, but there's also a good practical use with this with lava. So if you go ahead and maybe get a big two-handed weapon and throw it across, you can get a bunch of platforms. Like look how many platforms I just got over here. Okay, I'm Sidon. I am burning. I got to eat food. There we go. Ate my food. And then I could just hop across here and basically throw another water attack and keep going. So it's really cool to use this for platforms. Sidon is, is nice. Very good. Very useful, especially if you get Sidon before coming to the volcano area in Elden. This is Minoru. And unlike the other sages, Minoru doesn't have a divine helm. But if you wear the Zonite helm, then Minoru gets the helmet just like me. And we look like twinsies. Also, you can hop on Minoru, which is really cool, and can ride it around. But let me tell you all the things that Minoru can do besides the obvious just hop on Minoru's back and ride it. One of the cool things that you can do with Minoru is attach a fan onto its back. So you can attach things all over Minoru, but putting it on its back, you can do some crazy things. So look at the speed you get when you put it on. Minoru's typically slow, but it goes pretty fast once you start adding the fan. And just to show you, this is what happens when you pass by enemies and you can actually outspeed enemies. And it does a little Naruto kind of run. I love it with the hands behind the back. Also, I tried using the fan to blow away smaller enemies. It does not seem to do the job. So, so don't try to do that. 
that at all. You, you, you'll just die. Don't do it. Now, some people may not know this, but you can actually shoot arrows while on Minoru. Just like this. Easy to take them out. So you can aim at any of the enemies without jumping off and just, just go ahead and shoot them. Another very cool thing to do on Minoru is to go into bullet time by pressing B and A while on top of it to get off. That way you can start nuking a bunch of enemies with arrow time. It's one of the best things to do. So if you come across a Lionel and maybe Minoru's there, we can just do that. Simply again, just press B and A just like this and start taking out your enemies unless they have shields like that annoying Red Bull Coblin over there. How cool. Some other fun stuff to know is that Minoru does not take any fall damage. This is me jumping from the Great Sky Island and <laughs> the hands wiggling in the air is probably the funniest thing. But we just go all the way to the ground and nothing happens. So zero fall damage, which is pretty convenient. When you fuse a wing onto Minoru's back, Minoru will actually start to glide. So here we go. Just going to put on the back. But you have to make sure that you activate the back part Y when you're falling down. So here we go. And Y. And you can safely glide down to wherever you need to go. I wonder if you could pair this with Tullin. I don't know. I didn't do it. So let me know in the comments if you're able to try that out. Can you can you double up on these two? That would be amazing. And then here's land making it on the way all the way there. And then the, it's, it's going to disappear the longer I hold it. Putting a hover stone on Mineru's back is probably the coolest thing. I, I say everything is cool, but like this one is very cool, right? Because the hover stone allows you to kind of float. And check this out. You start to walk on air when you place it on the back and hold it. So you have to press Y while you're doing this, which makes it a little uncomfortable when rotating. But it's just so cool to see that you can literally walk in the air. It's the funniest thing ever. Like, I, I want to walk to Hyrule Castle by just having this on my back. Maybe someone should try that. Actually, you, someone try that in the comments and let me know if you could walk to Hyrule Castle by jumping off somewhere. So cool. Being on top of Minoru is also really good for grabbing fairies because usually when a fairy sees you, the fairies can get scared and start to raise to elevated heights. So let me just show you uh, how the fairies start to move when you get closer. It's like this one's flying away, but you got it. And fairies are going to be really essential for when you get hurt and bring you back to life. Like I'm running up on this one. This one's trying to fly away, but you know what? We're so tall that we can grab it. So yes, use it to get fairies. Now I've talked about this with Sidon, but you can also attach a fire hydrant <laughs> to Minoru. And yeah, you could you could uh, do some damage to these Igneo taluses by completely numbing them out so that Link can get on top of the back and get to work on it. So very cool stuff to do with Minoru. So you can use it against actually a bunch of different types of enemies. One of the favorite monsters that I like fighting with Minoru is going to be the frogs. Uh, you're going to be using two things to combo here to do it. So when you approach it, you can do the BA off of the back to hit the eye. So completely immobilizing it. And then Minoru can actually climb on top of the frog. So if you have the metal arm that you find in the Bokoblin camps, you can just start slamming and breaking all the pieces of the back. Now, the frog is going to lift you up in the air. And it's not going to open its mouth and try to eat you because you're actually on the robot. So look at that. It's not opening up its mouth. You're going to fall right down. And then as soon as you recover, guess what you can do again? BA, hit the eye, hop right back on Minoru, climb back up on the frogs, and get right to work on breaking it again. Now, when the frogs does its suck attack, or it's, yeah, it's basically trying to suck you in, you can shoot the cannon in it, and it kind of acts like a bomb, so you see the frogs just basically blow up. There it is, and it's dead. So you can use the cannon, you can get on top of it. There's so many things you can do with Minoru and destroy these frogs. I think I said frogs, but I meant frogs. Minoru is very good for walking in shallow lava, so you can get across any lavas, but just make sure it's shallow. All these examples are very important to know that they have to be shallow. So lava is a great one. Mineral can also go ahead and walk in shallow water. If you go into deep water, Mineral would just despawn. So do this only on areas you know that is shallow. Uh, I, I keep saying that again because I don't want you to mess up. Be like, no, Philly, it doesn't work. Please don't be that person in the comments. And it also works on shallow tar. Here is some nasty tar that you'll normally sink in. And I almost thought I actually was going to drown here, but it was shallow enough for Mineral to walk on. So all three of these you can get through even icy waters that are pretty much shallow. If you attach rare jewels like the ruby, topaz, or sapphire, mineral basically becomes like this elemental mage that will throw out these balls when you're fighting enemies. So here's a, just a quick example of it. There is an ice combo with electric. And something interesting is when an enemy is frozen and you hit it with the electric, it amplifies the area. So let me just give you a quick example. I'm going to avoid that armored guy over there. And we're just going to go ahead, dodge this, and let me get, let me, let me use some of these elemental attacks right here. So here's electric going out and here's a mix of ice and you can see the area of effect of the shock by just hitting an ice enemy. So it's just comboing these things uh, does a lot of fun stuff. So see if you can build yourself an interesting elemental Minoru with maybe the fire one as opposed to the electric or ice I'm using. Remember, the fire on its back literally doesn't do anything. I tried
inside the ruby on the back it does not activate it's just there for show so let me know what combinations you're trying out with minaru when it comes to gems and stuff like that i also wanted to experiment with some monster parts so on my left hand is the gliok frost horn and on my right hand is going to be the silver lino horn which does like 55 damage so minaru is now going to be doing a good amount and if you freeze something that 55 is going to be times three because it's times three with ice so 55 times three yeah you're pretty much going to one shot these guys i'm pretty sure red bull goblins die anyway on one shot of the ice so that's a lot but we also have a, a silver bull goblin here so look at this boom <laughs> just like flies across the area so there's so many fun combos you can do with and also let me know what monster part combos you're going to be doing with Minoru. now a lot of these examples that i'm using is going to be with the ice because i just feel like ice is so overpowered but here we go we're going to grab uh ice and we're going to also attach it to weapons because weapons are really good to put on to Minoru. because why not we can do weapons we can do monster parts we can do everything so here's just an example of freezing an enemy and then just hitting it with a zora spear boom wax the enemy and then i have a silver boss bow cobbler trap here in the corner so this is going to be a very fun example of showing a 19 powered spear with just freezing it so three times attack every time so just whack you can freeze it again just hit it again and even if you're not doing a lot of damage the three times kind of elevates it so you don't have to do anything crazy here just freeze and combo it's so fun i think frost emitters are probably the most broken ones when it comes to mineru so yeah just look at the silver boss will come and just go down with something not even that powerful but my favorite one to combo is going to be the cannon and the ice the cannon and the ice are great because you're going to be able to break armor. You're going to be able to blow apart enemies all over the place. Like, look at that. You're just breaking the formation. Armor is shattering everywhere. You're getting times three damage. You're just, it's just chaos. And the freeze is just so nice where the enemies can't really bother you. Obviously, it's not as much damage as the weapons, but just being able to blow up enemies and knock them away is just, uh, it's just so fun. Best combo ever. Cannon and Ice Emitter. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you go ahead and check out this one over here. You'll learn a lot and it'll help you. Seriously, click it.